using the number and a number of. The number is the subject. See the example. The number of the cars is 30. In this picture, we see there are many cars, but the sentence has the subject, the number, and it is a singular subject, the verb is singular. Though there are more than 30 cars, but the verb is singular. Number B. The number of the cups is 7. The subject is the number. It is a singular subject. The verb is singular. A number of is the subject. Now we use a number of as the subject of a sentence. A number of cars are in the parking lot. In this picture we see there are several cars in the parking. A number of usually mentions plural number, so the verb is plural here. See another example. A number of chairs are in the room. There are many chairs. A number of usually means plural number, several or many. That's why this plural number has a plural verb, are. Proper noun ends in S. Some of the proper nouns ending in S is singular. Though the nouns add S, but it mentions the singular meaning. See the example. The United States is a big country. The map of United States, it is a big country. The proper noun, United States, is ending in S, but it is a singular noun, so the verb is singular. Another example. The Philippines is in Asia. We see the map of Asia and Philippine is in Asia. This proper noun has S at the end, but it is a singular noun, so the verb is singular. Number C. The United Nations has headquarters in New York. This is the headquarter of United Nations. It is a proper noun. It ends in S. It's not plural. It is a singular noun. So the verb is singular. Has. Illness ends in S. Some of the illnesses ending in S is singular. See the example. Diabetes is a disease. There are many reasons for it. This proper noun ends in S, but it is a singular noun. So the verb is singular. Another example. Mumps is an infection caused by a virus. This proper noun or the name of the disease ends in S. It's not plural. It is a singular noun, so the verb is singular. Number C. Measles is a childhood infection caused by a virus. In this picture, we see this child is affected by measles. This proper noun or the name of the disease ends in S. It's not plural. It is a singular noun. The verb is singular. Using every and each. Every and each are always followed immediately by singular nouns. Even when there are two nouns connected by and, the verb is singular. Every boy and girl is scared in the jungle. In the picture, every boy and girl is scared. In this sentence, every is followed by the singular nouns, boy, girl, and they are connected by and. The verb should be singular. See another example. Boy and girl, these two singular nouns are connected by and, and every is followed by them. Use where the present simple form of the verb and add s as the subject is singular. Every man, woman, and child needs proper care. Every is followed by the singular nouns, man, woman, and child. Add s with the present simple form of this verb. Every means a singular subject. Using a verb separated from its subject. Sometimes a phrase or a clause separates a subject from its verb. Such kind of interrupting structures do not affect the subject-verb agreement. See the examples. The sentence was before like this. Every boy and girl is scared in the jungle. We also can write this sentence by separating the subject from its verb. How we write? Every boy and girl in the jungle is scared. Compare these two sentences. The subject is separated from its verb. Every boy and girl is scared in the jungle. But when we separate the subject from the verb, we can write, Every boy and girl in the jungle is scared. See the other example. The sentence was like this, but we can separate its subject from its verb. Every boy and girl at the party wears a graduation cap. In this sentence, the subject boy and girl is followed by the verb immediately. But in the second sentence, the subject boy and girl is separated from its verb wears. There is a phrase after the subject and the verb is separated from the subject. 
we can also write these sentences. Each question that is important is written on the paper. The subject, each question is separated from its verb. There is a clause in between the subject and the verb. Another example, those books that I bought yesterday are with me. Those books, this is the subject, but this subject is separated from its verb, are. As there is a clause in between the subject and the verb. The clause is that I bought yesterday. If we remove the clause, we can say the sentence this way. Those books are with me. Each question is written on the paper. In both cases, if we remove the clause, also it can be a sentence. Using one of, each of, every one of, and none of. These expressions take singular verb followed by a plural noun or a pronoun. See the examples. One of the flowers is white. In the picture we see there are many flowers, but one of the flowers is white. The sentence begins with one. There is a plural noun here, flowers, but this plural noun is followed by a singular verb, is. Another example. One of them is reading a book. In this picture we see there are many children, but one of the child is reading a book. The sentence begins with one. There is a plural pronoun them, but this plural pronoun is followed by a singular verb is. Example C. Each of the buildings is tall. In the picture there are many buildings, and each of the building is tall. The sentence begins with each. There is a plural noun buildings, but this plural noun is followed by a singular verb is. Example D. Every one of the children is busy. In this picture, there are many children. Each of the children is doing different activities. The sentence begins with everyone. It is followed by a plural noun, children, but this plural noun is followed by a singular verb, is. See another example. It is an example of none of. None of the students is present in the class. This class has no children, no students. The sentence begins with none. It gives negative meaning. None is followed by a plural number, students, but this plural noun is followed by a singular verb, is. Example F. None of the students is writing. In this picture we see all the children or the students are listening to their teacher. They are not writing. The sentence again begins with none. It is followed by a plural noun, students, and students, this plural noun is followed by a singular verb, is. Using expressions of quantity. In most expressions of quantity, the verb is determined by noun or pronoun that follows of. In the examples, some of the student is holding a card. In the sentence, the noun, the student, is following of. And the noun is singular, so the verb is singular here, is. Most of the homework is easy. Homework, it is a singular noun, it follows of. And since it is singular, the verb is singular. Some of the students are holding a card. Here in the sentence, the students is a plural noun. It is following of. And due to this plural number, the verb is plural, are. Most of the assignments are easy. In the sentence, assignments is following of. And assignments is a plural number. So the verb is are. It's a plural verb. Number E. One of them is active. Here in this sentence, the sentence begins with one, even though the pronoun is plural. Due to one, the verb should be singular, is. Number F. Most of them are very important. The sentence begins with most and it expresses plural quantity. So the verb is plural, are. Adding final s or es to a noun. A final s is added to a singular noun to make the noun plural. See the table. In this table, we see a singular noun. It's a book. Usually, we add s to make the noun plural, like this, books. Another example, house. It's a single house, and we add s to make it plural. Houses. A singular noun is followed or preceded by a singular verb, such as, a book is on the table. The book is on the table. A book is a singular noun and it is followed by is, a singular verb. We can also say there is a book on the table. Here, book is preceded by 
a singular verb is. A plural noun is followed or preceded by a plural verb. These are plural nouns. Books, houses. Books are on the table. This is a plural noun and it is followed by a plural verb, are. We can also say, there are many books on the table. This plural noun is preceded by a plural verb, are. Adding final s or es to a noun. A final es is added to a singular noun ending in double s, ch, sh, and x to make the noun plural. In this chart, we see a singular noun, watch. This noun ends in ch, and according to the rule, we add es to make the noun plural, watches. Another example, glass. The word ends in double s, and we add es to make the noun plural, glasses. A singular noun is followed by or preceded by a singular verb. A glass is on the table. The singular noun is followed by a singular verb is. Also, we can say, there is a glass on the table. The singular noun is preceded by a singular verb is. A plural noun is followed by or preceded by a plural verb. See the example, glasses are on the table. This is a plural noun and it is followed by a plural verb are. We can say also, there are many glasses on the table. This plural noun is preceded by a plural verb are.